Welcome back to Have You Seen That Film? I'm your host, Dylan Lloyd. Welcome. Today's video, we're going to be discussing the top five films I don't understand the hype over. And maybe this isn't necessarily my the top five I don't understand the hype over. This is just the list I was able to sit down and be like, I don't understand why people like these movies so much. And so I'm going to warn you, there's going to be some people who are going to see this video and be extremely upset over these video, over the, the movies I have selected. But once again, I want to remind you that we're all entitled to our own opinion. You may love these movies, and that's great. I'm happy that you love them. I just don't get them. I don't understand them. But you may be like me, and some of these you may not understand the hype over either as well. Whatever it may be, I hope that you enjoy this video. And comment down below. If you disagree with me, tell me. Tell me why you love these movies that I don't understand. Maybe you'll help me understand why people like it so much. And these, this ranking, it, it's in no particular order. I just wrote out the list, and I'm just going to tell you my top five. There's not, there's, they don't go in any order. It's just, a, it's just my list today. So, um, first one that we're going to be discussing is Hocus Pocus. And I know people are probably freaking out in their seat right now because everybody loves Hocus Pocus. I just don't get the hype over it. I And, and this video, this, I've been thinking about this, doing this video for a long time, and then they released a trailer for Hocus Pocus 2, and I'm now like, oh, I'm going to do this. I don't, I don't get it. It was... <sighs> And I really wish I liked it more. I like Bette Davis. Not Bette Davis. I love Bette Midler. I think Bette Midler is hilarious. I love her in the First Wife's Club. I just don't like this. I don't like this. I just, I just didn't understand why everybody else likes it. And the more I've talked about it with people, a lot of people tell me um, they think it's a nostalgia thing. And this is coming from people who kind of like me. They didn't watch it until they were older. I only watched it for the first time, I think, two years ago. It was my very first time seeing Hocus Pocus, and that was because everyone talks about it. I just didn't get it. I didn't like it. The one sister that's like a dog was very annoying and uncomfortable. And it... I don't know. I don't know what, how to... Why? I just don't like it. It just wasn't... It wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be. It wasn't a cult classic like I thought it would be. In my eyes. In everyone else's eyes. I understand it's... You may love it. Again, that's great. I just don't. I don't understand it. My, uh, the second one we're going to be discussing is, I wrote them down because I wanted to make sure, so that's why I keep glancing over here. The second one we're going to be discussing is The Greatest Showman. Or in my, my title for it is The Worst Showman. I don't understand how this movie was as popular and as successful as it was. Granted, I will admit, some of the songs are very good. I love the Don't You Want to Get Away, the song in the bar between Zac Efron and, and Hugh Jackman. That was great. It was fantastic. Um, but the rest of it, I just I don't understand the hype of it. Really, if you, if you honestly are watching this movie and look at it, Hugh Jackman's character, P.T. Barnum, never has a redeeming moment throughout the entire movie. He treats the circus people like crap, which, granted, this is, I'm guessing, supposed to be historically accurate, or they're trying to, and P.T. Barnum was not that great of a guy. But he doesn't, he, he treats them awfully, like he won't let them into the party because he wants to be cool and sophisticated. And then, in the end, they all just kind of, like, forgive him, and they're all singing and happy and dancing together, but he never apologizes to them. He doesn't. And he actually isn't the one who saves the circus. Hugh Jackman's, uh, Zac Efron's character, who isn't even a real person, is from what I've, to I've been told, is the one who has been saving his money because he's been actually, he he's been taking his cut, even though Hugh Jackman hasn't been paying people. He's been taking his cut, and he has enough to save the circus and do what they got to do with it. <clears throat> Which is awesome. Like, woo, thank you, Zac Efron. But he wasn't even a real individual. So really, this movie that everybody loves and cheers and thinks is so great is about a guy who's a pretty big piece of crap who doesn't apologize and yet everyone still loves him and wants to sing and dance with him. What the heck? The greatest showman, in my words, is the worst showman. Except for you, Zac Efron. You were fantastic in that movie. And Hugh Jackman, you weren't bad. You just played a bad guy. And I don't get how wow, this movie is even remotely that good. That's just my opinion. Again, some fantastic songs. I take back the remotely good. I mean, there are some good songs in it, but it's 
I don't like the movie. That's just me. Again, I'm sure people are freaking out about this. I get people freaking out about me all the time when I say I don't like this movie. Again, it's you. You have your own opinion, and I, I love your opinion. Share it with me. Um, <clears throat> the third one I'm going to talk about, and this is, I'm sure, this is another one that people freak out at me for, and I don't really care. This is, I don't care, people. I don't. <sighs> the Dark Knight. Yeah, The Dark Knight. Christian Bell, Heath Ledger. Why? Why? Why is it? It's so hyped up as it is. And maybe maybe I have the issue, my, maybe my problem is, and, and I've experienced this before, is I see a movie that's been so hyped up, and when I see it, it's kind of like, well, what what was so spectacular about that? That was my, my instance with The Dark Knight. I just, it, people had hyped it up so much because I didn't see it in theaters. I was only like junior high, seventh grade, probably when it came out. So I was like 13, 12, 13, I don't know. And people had hyped it up so much. It's the most amazing movie. It's so fantastic that when I saw it, it was like, I mean, it was okay. It wasn't bad, but I don't get why everyone's freaking out about this. Because let's all be honest, because we can. The ba Batman Returns, starring Michael Keaton, is 100% better. And honestly, let's all be honest with ourselves. That is the best Batman movie. You can fight me on that if you want, and I will argue all day long. But Batman Returns is 100% better than The Dark Knight and is the best Batman movie. End of story. But I just I just don't get it, and it's not... I don't know. And I'm not the biggest fan of Christian Bell as Batman. No, I, I don't mind The Dark Knight Rises. I like that. The other two Batmans were fine with Christian Bell. He's not my favorite Batman. Michael Keaton, hands down, is the best Batman. I just don't understand the hype of it. That's just me. And... um. Like people think Joker is amazing and did all this like stuff that no one's ever done before, but it's like I don't know. I don't think Christian Bell's not Christian uh, Heath Ledger's. I don't. I wouldn't rank him as one of the best villains in my opinion either. This Joker, I I don't. I just don't understand the hype of it. And maybe if I'd seen it before everyone else saw it, maybe I'd like it more. And and like it, the last time I watched it was in school, so I've only ever seen it twice, two and a half times. I don't remember. The second time, I was kind of like, oh, like, that wasn't terrible. But I still wasn't like, I don't get, I just, I don't understand the hype over it. I just don't. Somebody explain this to me. Why is it so good? Why do you think it's so good? Somebody tell me. I'd like to know. I don't know if it's going to change my opinion, but tell me. I'd love it. Go for it. Coming in at, not coming in, uh, the fourth movie we're going to discuss is Die Hard with a Vengeance or Die Hard 3. Many people regard this to be the second best Die Hard movie, right after um, the first Die Hard. I find this movie to be super boring, and I don't even feel like it's a Die Hard movie. And this is honestly, this is the point when Die Hard stopped being Die Hard, in my opinion. This is when Die Hard started to become more like Lethal Weapon. It started becoming more of a buddy cop movie. Because from here, from starting with number three, he's got, he's working side by side with somebody else, John McClane. So he's no longer the lone wolf who is doing these things on his own. He's now, you know, he's got, in this one, he's got Samuel L. Jackson. And uh, the next one, he's got Justin Long, and the last one, he's got a son. That like it's it's just they stop. It stops being Die Hard, in my opinion. Like it's yeah, it's still John McClane. He still does these things, but it doesn't really feel like a Die Hard movie anymore to me. And it's just boring. I just I didn't feel like it was. I wasn't engaged on the edge of my seat. I, and maybe it's because it's not very much action throughout the movie. I I feel and and the fight scene, the, the one fist fight or whatever that takes place in the warehouse, whatever, it was so terribly edited that that was just a joke. That was just laughable. But I just, it's so, it, the action just wasn't there. I was, it's die hard. I want gun fights and fist fights and explosions and it just wasn't really happening and it, I don't like this movie. I don't watch this one. I don't. I was, this was a one and done. I wish I could understand why people think this is such a good movie, but I don't. I really think this is the worst of the Die Hard movies that I've seen. I never bothered with number five. 
a good day to die hard. So out of the first four, I think this is the worst one. And I'm sure people are losing their minds, but it is, in my opinion. I don't, I don't like it. I don't get it. I don't get any of these. That's the point of this video. And the last one I'm going to discuss, this one, oh, as I've told people, this, is, this was a time in my life that I will never get back. And it rather upsets me that this movie was not as good as I was hoping it to be. Before I say what it was, I'm going to give you a little story. I had, you know, there was a, I had recently in my life gotten on a Jim Carrey hype. Uh, I'd watched Liar Liar, which my favorite Jim Carrey movie. Love it, hands down. Um, I was watching, so I watched Liar Liar. Uh, I discovered Fun with Dick and Jane, and one day I came across Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. And many people regard this to be as like the funniest movie. And I was like, great, Jim Carrey. I think he's hilarious. I love watching him. I'm going to check this out. I don't know if... I will never get this time back in my life. I don't know if I've... Okay, I'm sure there's other movies I've regretted watching. But hands down, this is like the, one of the top, I regret watching Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. I did not laugh once. I was just so like, what? I was just, that's exactly, I was just like, what? Like, what is this? How is this? How is this what people love so much? How do people consider this to be the best Jim Carrey movie? How do people consider this to be a classic? I, do, I don't get it. I don't, I just, it wasn't funny at all. I just felt like everything fell, fell flat. It just, I don't get it. I don't. I don't. And that's why this is a, a list of the top five movies or five movies that I just don't understand the hype over it. But Ace Ventura, I mean, thinking about it now, it's almost like I'm angry that I watched it. I'm angry at myself and I shouldn't be. I can say that I've seen it, but even is that really what I want to say? Like it just, it was so bad. I wish it was better. I wish it, I wish I wish I could understand these, but that is just one of it was just the worst Jim Carrey movie I've ever seen. And I haven't seen them all. But out of the Jim Carrey movies I've seen, that is one I will never watch again. Out of any movie, out of movies I've seen in general, I will never watch that one again. Never. I just I can't. I can't. And that's my list. That is my list of the top five or five movies that I don't understand the hype over. And I'm sure there are people, as I said in the beginning of this, freaking out over what I've said. And that's fine. Tell me about it. Share your opinion. If you agree with me, let me know. Share your own list. Tell me movies that you don't understand the hype over. Because, really, that's the beauty of movies, and I say this a lot, is we all have different views, we all have different opinions. So the way I see a movie and love it, you may see a movie, that same movie, and hate it. Share your movies, the top five movies that you don't understand the hype over. I would love to hear it. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope I haven't upset anybody too much over what I've said. Again, comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And keep watching. That's a wrap.